Okay, it is um, September 7th, 2012, and we're interviewing Emily Perry about uh, Hurricane Diane, and I'm just going to start. Um, the first question I have is, think back to the time of the flood. Where were you, and what were you doing when you first heard about the flood? Well, actually, I was living in the area that was about to be flooded. Uh, my parents had a restaurant, a bar and restaurant, right on the corner of Ash and Union Street, and that's where I was born and grew up, and I would have been 15 years old. And uh, I remember the night very clearly because we had had several days of heavy rain and everyone was worried about the dam and the bridge. But um, it was a Monday night and I was watching Climax with my dad uh, at 8.30, I think it came on. And all of a sudden someone came knocking on the door and banging on the door saying, Guy, that was my dad, Guy Savino, you have to come, you have to come, the water's going over the bridge. And I remember running down there with my dad and it was lapping over the bridge that went uh, over the creek before it went up the hill to what we call Bunker Hill. And um, there was a lot of alarm because the force of the water was very strong. Uh, but at that point it was just lapping over the bridge and spreading out a little bit. But by midnight that night it had flooded over the bridge and had flooded that whole two block area. Uh, down to where it made the bend and went down into Southside. And um, then the Red Cross was there and the police cars were there and ambulances and they were, they had, somehow they got boats, rowboats in there and they were trying to get the people out who had refused to leave because a lot of people really didn't believe this was going to happen. And um, the word was that the dam was breaking and it was going to flood and they were hesitant to leave their homes. So they had boats there, and they were bringing people out in boats and over to our restaurant, which was right at the base of the hill. So we were somewhat uh, safe from the flooding, although we had bags of sand all along the side of our building. And they were coming into the restaurant and up into our house, and <clears throat> it was, as the night got, went on and on, it was scarier and scarier, and we kept hearing these people screaming. And we knew about this elderly couple and I can't remember their name, I'm sure it's in the literature, S, S something. And they were, they got stuck in a tree when their house got washed away and they were screaming for help and the boats could no longer get to them because the current was so strong that it was just carrying everything with it. And um, eventually they found their bodies down in Southside and they identified her by her wedding band. Now, I don't know if her husband stayed in the tree or got out. I'm very confused about that at this point in time. But my dad, <clears throat> who had had this bar and restaurant there for, well, this was 55 since probably the 30s, um, was sort of like the un untitled mayor of this little community. And people used to come to guide with their problems or if they needed to borrow a little money. And so he was really distraught over this whole community because it was called Little England and it was a wonderful cohesive little community. I mean everybody knew everyone else. Uh, I've told stories of riding my bicycle down Union, up the court, down Richter and then even over to where Jack's family lived. It was just a safe neighborhood and uh, it was a happy little community and it was washed out. I mean eventually the Scranton Redevelopment Authority bought up what was left of the homes and my father fought to stay there because our home was not damaged and we did stay there. Today it's the site of Russell's restaurant, mm -hmm. which many people know. And um, we used to get on the Red Cross trucks and they would take us up to the Myrtle Street Church for our meals. They were feeding us for at least two weeks after the flood. Lunch and dinner because everything was contaminated. People couldn't get back to their houses. I mean, what was left of their houses and the mud was unbelievable. I mean there was just wet mud everywhere you went and it was just a tragedy for that community. It destroyed it. Um, you answered uh, some of the questions already so that's good. I have a bunch of them and you answered two, three, four, oh. five, six. Okay. But number number six actually is where did you get your information? Where did you hear most of your information during well, the book? Well I witnessed it. I was okay. there. Um, you know, I was 15 years old, so I was old enough to remember, you know, the details of it. That was in August. 
And my father died in October, and suddenly, and we all, our family felt that this just destroyed him to see this community and what it went through, because it was, it was a very stressful time for everybody. Yeah. And uh, so I have pretty vivid memories of it. What do you remember seeing? Any, any visual images? I remember the rush of the water, which mm -hmm. uh, amazed me because uh, it was just almost incredulous that this little creek that we all used to throw rocks in and go over the bridge and look at it was now this roaring river. I mean, it just, in such a short period of time. And the force of it was frightening. Mm -hmm. And it was loud, there was so much noise from the water rushing, and then the houses crashing, and stuff being washed from above down through this community. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you answered part of the, the next question, um, which is, is that mine or yours? That's me. Okay. Do you want me to just grab it? Just, just ignore it, that's ignore. okay. okay. Um, Basically, um, any smells associated with the flow? We talked about sounds, we talked yeah. about... Yeah. Uh, just a, a wet mud kind of rotting smell. Mm -hmm. You know, a wood that gets saturated yeah. with water and mud. And all these people were shoveling mud out of their house. I remember my, my uh, brother and his wife, I was the youngest of eight children. I had an older brother who lived on Union Street with his wife and her mother and his daughter, who was maybe 12 at the time and let's see if I was 15 and she was 13. And they were trying to move stuff upstairs when the water was starting to rise. And she always tells a story about her mother and father said, grab things that are valuable and bring them upstairs. And she grabbed the Bible and ran upstairs. <laughs> and they were trying to save photo albums and mm -hmm. things because their whole first floor was full of mud and mm -hmm. water and destroyed. And it was a horrible stench. I mean, it, something that you don't want to ever think about again. Mm -hmm. You know, I always, I often thought back to it and wonder about how much, you know, they say disease just thrives in that environment. And I don't remember any um, serious diseases or illnesses following this whole period of time when they were cleaning out these houses and trucks were hauling this mud away. And I don't recall anything like that. They must have cleaned it up quickly enough. Or, I don't know. It was a long process. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Um, it's okay. <laughs> um, it's part of the historical record. Um, and memories about the first few days after the flooding. Um, any memories come to mind um, about the first few days? I think I think of the Red Cross trucks mostly. Mm -hmm. And the people piling out, you know how you sit on the side of these arm. They were army trucks mm -hmm. with big Red Cross signs on them. And you would just jump on the on the benches, and they drive us up. And the people were so quiet, and it was just a heaviness, you know, like what's going to happen to our life, mm -hmm. you know, our home, everything's going to change, and the uncertainty and the um, uh, desperateness when you would look at them about what's going to happen. You know, no one knew were they going to get any salvage anything? Was their property going to be worth any money? No one knew. A lot of unanswered questions mm -hmm. that I think was very frightening to people. I'm sure. Um, anything else you want to relate? That's all questions I have. Anything else you remember that you want to talk about? Or? No, I, I do remember um, uh, that my father died three months later, two months later, so October. And, uh, and we really felt that he died because this just broke his heart. I mean, he had been in that community for so long, and he had been like a really good neighbor to so many people there and helped so many of them. He just never quite accepted what had happened. And it was pretty ugly for a long time. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>